Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to another video on TJ Productions and for today's video it is my top 10 big finish stories. Yeah I've wanted to do this video for quite some time but the reason why it's been a while for me to actually deliver this video is because of constructing the list. I have a lot of big finish audios and have listened to a lot of big finish audios and I found it very tough to narrow it down to 10. And yeah, as well, Big Finish have not only a huge output of Doctor Who releases, and not just Doctor Who as well, because they do stuff like Survivors, Dark Shadows, The Omega Factor, etc, etc. But even their Doctor Who range, there's a massive variety, like monthly range, the 4th Doctor Adventures, the 8th Doctor Adventures, the Companion Chronicles, Lost Stories, Beneath Summerfield, novel adaptations, there's a lot, and as well, spin-offs as well. And this covers everything Doctor Who, so things like spin-offs will count in this video, the whole Doctor Who range. So, yes, it's very difficult to narrow this down. So yeah, with spin-offs included, that will count like the Beneath Summerfield releases, Jaguar and Lightfoot, countermeasures, even though I don't have any countermeasures, but you get the idea, spin-offs are counted in this video. So yeah, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the best of the best, for me, when it comes to Big Finish. And yeah, there are classics that aren't on this list, but again, it goes to show how many classics there are by Big Finish. But I will give a few some honorable mentions because I think you know they do deserve it because they are just stunning Big Finish releases, which unfortunately didn't get on my top 10. So without no further ado, let's begin with my top 10 Big Finish stories. So number 10 on the list, we have a third Doctor story. Yeah, not a lot of third Doctor action when it comes to Big Finish, but I'm very happy that now the third Doctor has its own dedicated range with the third Doctor adventures. But yes, I'm not going to be saying one from the third Doctor adventures range, it's actually before the range even started. Is it a Companion Chronicle? No it's not, it's a lost story. This was the lost story that finished the range and I've had this in my collection for ages, but eventually I got round to listen to it. I think I had a bit of a fear that I might find it a bit of a slog. I was absolutely wrong. I am on about The Mega. Originally written and intended for the John Poe era, I think season 8 or season 9. Originally written by Bill Stratton, it was adapted by the magnificent Simon Guerrier. It's The Mega. Wow, what a flipping good story. And if you love the third dog here, this was basically... It'd be your bread and butter, pretty much. Everything from the events of the story, the dialogue, and the drive, it feels like a John Pertwee third Doctor story. Because when an assassination attempt is first demonstrated of a new deadly weapon, the third Doctor, you know, gives his opinions on this, and he's absolutely disgusted with this. You know, units see like a positive with this weapon, but the third Doctor is completely against it. He hates this weapon. It's vile dangerous and if it's used by the wrong hands then it could be disastrous. And as well the aliens in this story are very good as well. Everything just works in this audio and this is one thing it nails and for a six part big finish story this is just great. And not a lot of them actually do nail this. But my fear was it would be a slog, tedious. No it's not tedious. I listened to this from start to finish and my investment to the story the engagement never left me. It never left me. And I can see that this is just a fantastic third Doctor story. If you're looking into the lost stories, this one, definitely go for it. It's got very similar elements and story plots to The Mind of Evil. So I think I appreciate it for that reason as well. Because I adore The Mind of Evil. It's one of my favourite Doctor Who stories of all time. So with some of The Mind of Evil elements in this story, I think that's another reason why I appreciate this story a lot. Basically, if you love the third Doctor era, the niche should be in your collection right now. It's a solid, solid story. I personally give it a 10 out of 10. And yes, all these releases here, I rate a 10 out of 10. And funny enough, I do only rate 10 Doctor Who Big Finish audios a 10 out of 10. Yeah, this is nothing really wrong with it. You know, I do have nitpicks of it, but to be honest, it's only just me pitching, I would say, really like... Richard Franklin does do the impression of Nicholas Courtney, or sorry, not Nicholas Courtney, of the Brigadier, and you know, eventually he does get there, but 
you know, it's not perfect. Number 10, it's the Mega. Flipping brilliant story. Fully deserves that. Classic Pertwee. Just get it if you love the third Doctor era. That's it. Number nine on the list, one of my personal favourites here, one of my earliest Big Finish stories, and it was my first Big Finish Jonathan Morris story. I love Jonathan Morris as a writer, he is one great writer, I've followed his work for quite some time. I do love his Doctor Who books, like an Aquaphobia, brilliant, bleak and creepy story. Fast or Death, very paradoxical and creative and a clever story, and The Tomorrow Windows, I haven't read it yet, but I'm very sure it'll follow the same path. This was the first big finish Jonathan Morris story I experienced, and that was The Curse of Davros. Personally, one of my favourites, it was because it's one of my earliest big finish stories. Now, I won't say the twist in this one, even though I predicted it. Yes, that's to say that the Sixth Doctor, Colin Baker himself, can, can add some versatility to his uh, voice acting, and yeah. Colin Baker, brilliant as ever, and of course, not, well, not really the introduction to Flip, because that was another story called The Crimes of Thomas Brewster, but this is her actually introduced as a companion here, which is Flip, played by Lisa Greenwood as well. And as well, very nice development, and very nice character development for Davros, which goes into detail what he feels like to be well, a dead husk, essentially. Yeah, Daleks are brilliant as well, doing stuff with history, trying to change history. But yes, I will leave this story to you. But yeah, personally, this is one of my favourites. You may not see it on anyone else's top 10 if you listen to a lot of Big Finish audios, but the reason why it's on my top 10, it was one of my earliest Big Finish stories and my first Jonathan Morris story. And yeah, Jonathan Morris is, after all, my favourite Big Finish writer and one of my favourite writers of all time. So yeah, number 9 is The Curse of Davros, one of my personal favourites at number 9. Number 8 on the list, we have another Six Doctor story. Yes, another Six Doctor story. And this is one of the more earlier ones within the monthly range. This is the Apocalypse Element, which is written by Stephen Cole. Now, sometimes for me, Stephen Cole's stories don't really stick out to me. But when I listened to this one, God, was I flipping wrong. This is an action packed, thrilling, epic, bleak and one engaging story. And by far my favourite from the Dalek Empire arc, which was in the monthly range. Now some people don't like this one, I've seen, but don't really see why, to be honest. I found this engaging from start to finish, and this is the Daleks of full force here. You know, they do not mess about, and you can see how far the Daleks will go achieve victory. And yes, this is where the Daleks invade uh, Gallifrey. Not the Time War, but I guess you can think of it as what if the Six Doctor was in the Time War. Yeah, the Apocalypse Element. Personally, one of the best Dalek stories. Number seven on the list, again, one of my more earlier Big Finish stories, like The Curse of Davros, when I listened to this one, I immediately fell in love with it. It was dark, gothic, it was definitely very bleak, and this story is by one of my favourite writers here, because it's Kevin Scott and Mark Wright, it's Project Twilight. Yeah, if you've followed the channel, and with Big Finish content, you know that I'm a massive fan of this one, and the Project series. I've listened to Lazarus again, that was brilliant. Not enough to get on this list, and I personally prefer Twilight, probably because I listen to Twilight more, and I listen to it a lot earlier. But still, Lazarus is absolutely fantastic. I haven't listened to Destiny just yet, but this one I would say it would definitely stand the strongest for me. It's just got everything. Characters, dialogue, drive, bleakness, scare factor, the villains, it's all there, and it's the beginning of the Project Forge arc. The story's just got absolutely everything it has, in my opinion, and it's been quite a while since I've listened to this one, so I definitely want to re-listen to it someday down the line. If you haven't listened to any of the Project stories, 
give this one a shot. It'll really make you want to experience more of the Project Forge arc, and even as a standalone story, this one is just a masterpiece. Number five on the list, we have an entire series here. Because this series works as one big story, and I just like to put all of them up here because it just definitely deserves it, and, and it is seriously some of the best big finish work of all time. I am on about the I Davros series, and was it worth it? This is a masterpiece. Yeah, I'm so glad that I eventually checked this out because it's only like £16 on the Big Finish website for all of them. So you really cannot say no to that. You just cannot deny it. You just can't say no to it. Just pick them up. It's only £16. Four hours of just masterpieces, as I said. All of them are fantastic and explore and expand on the character of Davros. For example, the first story, we see his life as a young child, then more developed in a teenager. We see how Daphros' life was on Skaro, his family, how he wanted to become a scientist but he was more forced into the war, and that expands on more in Purity, which is my personal favourite from the series. Then we see the Davros that we all know and love, how he rises to power on Skaro, and a really good lead up to Genesis of the Daleks. If you love Genesis of the Daleks, if you love Davros as a character, which I certainly do, 16 quid, buy it right now, I'll even link it in the description because it's seriously worth it, trust me. Number five on the list, we have an Eighth Doctor story coming in now. And yes, actually is the only Eighth Doctor story on this list. There were some very close ones here, like the Dark Eyes box set, was enough to get on my list, again, too many classics when it comes to Big Finish, so it's more of an honourable mention, Dark Eyes. Chimes of Midnight was close, Blood of the Daleks was quite close as well. But yeah, the Eighth Doctor story, but got on this list, and the only Eighth Doctor story, sure so, by the brilliant Robert Sherman. Yeah, a Robert Sherman story had to be on this list. Again, all of his work is absolutely fantastic, but... Only this one managed to get on this list, but I, I can still say that the Holy Terror is just brilliant. Jubilee as well, absolutely fantastic. Haven't listened to Deadline from the Unbound series just yet, but I would say that's probably just as good as the rest. Chimes of Midnight, obviously, but my favourite Robert Sherman story is Scherzer. The reason why, because this was made for audio. It just works as an audio so damn well. It wouldn't work as a book. Definitely wouldn't. It wouldn't work as a TV story. It was designed to work as an audio. Storytelling, the atmosphere, the ideas, the concepts, it works in an audio landscape. And my word, is it brilliant. And is it damn creepy as well? There's a part which I definitely did not see coming, and I did have my audio pretty loud. It was on the full set, and it was, and there was a jump scare which I didn't realise was actually coming. I wouldn't really say this is more of a beginner's audio because it is a bit crazy this one is, a bit mad with ideas. And this will always be my favourite Eighth Doctor story. Definitely will, I don't think anything will beat it really. My personal favourite top Eighth Doctor story. Again, I don't really want to ruin the concepts and ideas it has. It is seriously good, and I want you to experience the story for yourself and how it works. And it is from the Diverging Universe arc, I know that could be a little bit iffy, but at least check this one out, the first one, because it is perfection. Again, a little bit mad with its ideas, but I like that I do. It's very original, and definitely had to be on this list at number 5. Number four on the list we have another Six Doctor story, and this is actually my favourite Six Doctor story. No, it's not Project Twilight. Again, this story isn't beating Project Twilight by much, but when I listened to it, I just fully fell in love with it, really. Again, these stories 
you have to be in the move room because they're more character based stories and that's how the drive works with characters and I'm talking about the Villains trilogy. This features Omega, Davros and Master and the one on this list is Davros. Written by a legendary writer in my opinion, Lance Parkin. I know you don't really see a lot by Lance Parkin really, he's more of a quality over quantity sort of writer I would say. But this is my personal favourite from the Villains trilogy, even though Master was very close to getting on the list. I will say a little bit about Master because he was very close. That was a very creepy story that was. Definitely the best story by Joseph Lidster. Part 3 is magnificent perfection. Part 2, the dialogue with the Sanford Doctor and Jeffrey Reeves' master is wonderful. Part 4 does some little controversial twists in there and reveals, but hey, I think Master is absolutely fantastic. But I prefer Davros a little bit more. Probably why I like this one so much, because I l really do love I Davros, I flip and adore it. Again, the villains trilogy stories, Omega, Davros and Master, are character based, so they have to be stories where you have to be in the mood for it, I would say. Because if you're not, you won't really get through it, because the drive is based on the characters. Because they're very dialogue heavy, and if you listen to them, you'll definitely agree with me, but these stories are more dialogue heavy. But it expands on the wonderful villain Davros. Very political this story is, and I always think that the Sixth Doctor works with political stories very well just like the third Doctor. Terry Malloy does a fantastic job as Davros as always, we've got Wendy Pabry in this audio as well. Constructed as a two-parter, one part lasted about an hour long. Fantastic drive in my opinion when you're in the mood for it, and very political as well. Definitely on this list for me. Personally my favourite Six Doctor story, I fell in love with it. I would say the cliffhanger wasn't too special, but that's about it really. I enjoyed everything about this audio. Yes, now we're in the top three Doctor Who Big Finish audios. Top three favourite here. Not only are they just the best Doctor Who Big Finish audios, they are some of the best Doctor Who stories of all time, counting everything from TV stories, books, you name it. Some of the best Doctor Who stories of all time. We've got three more here, you can guess which ones they could be. But yes, at number three, we have a Big Finish story from the Monthly Range. It's my favourite story from the Monthly Range. It came out July 2015. When I got it, when I listened to it, I said, holy a whopping crap. good story. And it really is. I even had to listen to it again to find any negatives, but I loved it even more. And I don't get that a lot with a story, I don't. But yeah, I was struggling to find anything wrong with it. And it's just proven that there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's a perfect story for me, and my favourite from the Murphy range. It is Jonathan Morris's story, We Are The Daleks. I've recommended this to so many people, and they said the same thing that I've said. It's brilliant. It's perfect. And with the top three, I was really debating which one is number one. You know, the top three are so close. Part one is a perfect setter. It has a very powder Daleks feel. The Daleks are sly, they're cunning, they're deceitful, deceiving. And it does shape up to be a very political Doctor Who story. Then it changes up again and it definitely throws some very good original ideas with the Daleks. Alex Xenos, head of the Xenos Corporation, is a wonderful character. Again, marvellous twists with his character. Again, with other characters like Celia Dunthorpe. Again, marvellous twists and unpredictability with this story. Again, I've had a, a few people talk to me again, a little bit worried at the political aspects of the story. Believe me, they're brilliant. I know that some people don't really like political stories or very heavy political stories. This one isn't. Darth Ross is definitely a very heavy political story. But don't be alarmed, it really is good. And it just changes direction a little bit and becomes more epic and action packed within like the second half. And again, it ends on a cliffhanger. Where's the sequel to this story? Come on, Jonathan Morris. Where's the sequel? Because the ending was definitely teasing a sequel. Again, I personally think it, you know, it's been very long now, almost two years, and just feel like a plot thread which won't be concluded or answered. 10 out of 10, again on my second list and I was trying to find something wrong with it but I didn't really have nitpicks with that either. Maybe one thing but 
To be honest, like a pity of a look, really, as in, it's not that bad at all. Really not bad. It's just a little pacing issue during the second half, but fine. Enjoyment factor is too high. 10 out of 10, one of the best Doctor Who stories of all time, and one of the best Dalek stories. It even rivals some of the classic uh, 60s stories for me, like, like a Dalek's Master. I'd probably even prefer it more, to be honest. I know that's saying a lot. Number three, we are the Daleks. I'm not really a big fan of the Fifth Doctor, but this audio really changed my opinion on the Fifth Doctor. And when he's written good, I love his Doctor. Again, he just suffered with the classic series a little bit. There's a little bit of plans as a Doctor, and he, but he did get going in his last season. I definitely agree to that. But this big finish audio changed my view on the Fifth Doctor because this story is dark, bleak epic, dangerous, and the best Fifth Doctor story I have ever experienced. There were some close ones, like Accutane, Spare Parts, Fifth Doctor box set was pretty good. This one, it just does it for me. And I think you should know what it is if you follow my channel. It's The Elite. Originally written by Barbara Clegg, it didn't happen because I think it was just too ambitious, really. If I was to do a list of like the top 10 Doctor Who stories of all time, or the top 20, this would definitely be on it somewhere. And it's really bleak. It's got some fantastic twists. It's got a lot of elements from like the Time Warrior. And if you listen to the story, you probably know why. It's got unpredictable moments. And again, what I like about it the most is seriously bleak and really dark. And to, and to see the Fifth Doctor in these bleak situations, I just love it. Because, in my opinion, I think the Fifth Doctor works so well in bleak and dangerous stories, something like this, because he feels vulnerable. And sometimes the Fifth Doctor has to go that extra mile to sort it out. It's done in the Peterloo Massacre done in this as well. And there's one character that goes absolutely crazy and neurotic, it's the High Priest. Sorry, not the High Priest, I think it was Fane, played by Ryan Sampson. Seriously well executed with writing, dialogue, execution, it's got it all. There's a lot of plot strands to this one, leave it to you. Definitely number two on this. I was sort of thinking that this might be number one, but um, it's hard, but yeah, I'm putting it at number two, I am. I feel more happy to put it at number two. Find it online, get it from the Big Finish website, Amazon, eBay, or whatever. So that's number two, the Elite. Let's move to number one. So to recap on the list, number 10 is the Mega. Number 9 is The Curse of Davros. Number 8 is The Apocalypse Element. Number 7 is Project Twilight. Number 6 is The I Davros series. Number 5 is Shurzo. Number 4 is Davros. Number 3 is We Are the Daleks. And number 2 is The Elite. The uh, number 1 is a horror based one. I was recommended to check this range out. I listened to series 1. Loved it, listened to the pilot, loved it, listened to series 2, I was completely hooked. And I've listened to this series so many damn times, it's now a 10, and it's my favourite Big Finish audio to listen to. Again, the Elite and the Wheel of the Daleks, Davros are very damn close, and Shuzo as well. This is my number one, because out of all of them, I would listen to this over the rest. Again, not quite much, it's my personal favourite. It's Jago and Lightfoot series 2. This, you know, got me into the Jago and Lightfoot series and said that this is like the best spin off of all time. Now, seriously, if you have not checked out the Jago and Lightfoot series, you you really need to. Again, the best again the best thing to do is not just get the box sets in a random order or get the most recent one. Marathon them. Listen to them in order. I love this box set because it's got hammer horror, it's got bleak moments, it's got originality as well got a lot in this box set. And with Hammer Horror, that's Lightfoot and Sanders, Bleakness, that's the Necropolis Express, and originality and creativity, 
That's the theatre of dreams. See, it's got a lot of my favourite Doctor Who storytelling, or just generally my favourite types of storytelling, in one box set. It's quite a few. It's quite a few Jago and Lifer box sets, which I would say are quite close to the list. Again, I will reveal my favourites in another video when I overview my series and do my top ten Jago and Lifer stories. Even though it's very obvious what my number one is. But yes, Lifer and Sanders is very Hammer horror. I love it and. Gabriel Sanders is just a magnificent, creepy, sinister villain. It's by David Collins. So yes, that is my favourite Big Finish release of all time, Jago and Life is Series 2. So yes, that was my list on my top 10 Big Finish stories. Again, you can put yours in the comments down below. I'd like to see other people's favourite Big Finish stories, or you can even do a video response if you want to. Again, if people want to begin with Big Finish, again that's good to comment down below so you can give them some recommendations of your favourite Big Finish stories and not just myself. Yeah, there's a lot of close, close ones as well which I just want to mention I do, like the Oliver Harper trilogy with the Perpetual Bond which is one of my personal favourites again, again, just didn't make it, it didn't, the first wave, Rocket Men, Return of the Rocket Men, it's, it's too many, it's too many. I could do a whole video just dedicated to classic big finish releases, there's so many. You can see how difficult it was to narrow it down to 10. I'm happy with what I've got in my top 10. So yes, that was the video, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in another Doctor Who related video on Tito Production. So thanks for watching and of course, have a good one.